Hi and welcome. This video is about OCD, anxiety, stress, and depression or other mental disorders. For me, it is OCD. That's my big one. OCD, anxiety. I don't have as much anxiety as I used to, but I still have it. And it's something that I started to discuss in the last video and I decided to um, come back and talk about it a little more. It's not something that I've ever really talked about because I, I just I just didn't want to and I didn't feel comfortable talking about it and I guess I felt embarrassed about talking about it. But as of late I've noticed that you know more and more people are coming forward and they're talking about having whatever issues they have um, mental disorders, depression, anxiety, panic disorders, whatever it is they have, they're coming forth and at PTSD, whatever, and they're talking about it. Well, anyway, so I decided I should, you know, I decided I did want to talk about it or touch base on it because I had started to talk about it in the last video and I didn't want to make that video a really, really long, drawn out video about you know, mental disorders and depression and anxiety and that kind of thing. For me, it's OCD. Now, when I was much younger, like in my teenage years, like 17, 18, early 20s, I developed depression, but that lasted for a little while and I had a lot of issues with depression and, you know, just high school stuff and then college stuff and, and loneliness, you know, that kind of thing. But eventually, you know, I, I kind of, I guess I just kind of got over it or got past it. There, there are times when I do feel sad or downtrodden, but not to the, not to the point where I need to, you know, uh, take medication or anything like that. It's nothing like that. Most of the time, you know, if I feel a little sad or a little down, I get out, I take a few pictures, do something, um, you know, and I drive, take a drive, and I feel better. I feel much better. I'm, I'm fine. But the big one is OCD, and I'm not sure at what age I developed that. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I started with OCD maybe around twenty mid-20s, mid-late 20s. Um, OCD became, I guess, a big part of my life, and I'm not really sure how or why. It, it, it just became a part of my life, and I struggled with it for a very long time. And it's taken a, a, a long time, a long time to try to um, get it under control, get it, uh, I don't know, if, get past it. I don't know if get past it's a good word because I don't think you ever get rid of it. I don't think maybe you ever can get past it. It's something you have to kind of learn to um, live with. And, and and the OCD, I know that certain things do trigger the OCD. Um, anxiety definitely triggers the For me, anxiety triggers the OCD. Um, if I'm nervous about something, that definitely triggers it. Um, you know, if I get into a state, a state of, um, I guess, where I'm not calm, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't know, I'm not calm, that's, that's it, angry, not calm, um, hyped up, then the OCD will definitely be worse. I, I mean, I, I guess the only way that I can describe it is I'm, I'm, I feel nervous, I feel nerve-wracked, and when I feel nerve-wracked, that kind of makes the nervousness worse and that kind of make and that makes the OCD the anxiety worse which makes the you know OCD worse um OCD being obsessive compulsive disorder um I I've, I've been to the doctor I've been to therapists uh doctors tried to prescribe medications for me they did not work I had such horrible side effects that I, I couldn't take it. The doctor went through a number of medications when, you know, and I think I, I really didn't, I didn't even really know what you called it. It was, um, when I first developed it, I didn't even know what it was. It wasn't until I was maybe in my early, mid-30s. I developed it maybe in my mid-20s, and I didn't know what it was until probably early to mid-30s. And 
OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. As I was saying, I didn't even know what OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder was until I developed it in my mid-20s, and I didn't even know what it was until maybe mid-30s, early to mid-30s. And I started talking to my doctor, and he's the one who brought up obsessive compulsive disorder. I may have seen it on a website somewhere prior to that. I, I, I don't know. I don't remember. But then he brought it up, and I started looking it up. Now, I never had OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder to the point where it was like I had to check doorknobs, you know, door locks a hundred times to make sure they were locked or wash my hands 50 or 60 times. It was nothing like that. It wasn't that bad. Thank God it, it was not that bad. But, but I did have it. I did have it. And there were times when I realized I would maybe do repetitive um, things repetitively. Uh, wash my hands maybe longer than I needed to, um, maybe do other things, repeat other things. One of the one of the ways that it came out, and I'm still struggling with that one, is I will kind of repeat, sometimes I will repeat myself when I'm talking, or um, I know I've noticed it in one, a few of my videos. I've, I've repeated myself, and then I've, I've tr I'm trying not to, and I apologize for it because, you know, I don't like repeating myself. And people have said stuff to me about it. And, and I've had friends and exes that really got angry with me when I repeated myself, my ex-husband. And I've tried. You know, I, I try to control it. And I do the best I can to do that. And But it also makes me, I don't know, maybe sad. You know, maybe angry or, or stirs emotions in me that may be negative emotions that it shouldn't because I mean I'm doing my best I'm trying and I've been on medication uh, and the medication did not work every medication the doctor put me on um, it just caused terrible terrible side effects and finally the doctor said okay we're gonna have to try to do it with behavior modification because it's not working so he adopted a, a little more, I guess the only thing he could do, which was a more holistic approach, a diet, exercise, um, things like that. Diet, exercise, uh, you know, meditation, prayer, whatever works, alternative, you know, holistic, alternative ways of trying to deal with it, mo behavior modification to try to to, to try to get it under control because medication simply did not work. I just couldn't take it and it caused too many side effects. So I, I had to try to do something else. And it's taken uh, a, a long time, you know, uh, uh, and a, a lot of confirm, you know, and a lot of affirm, I don't want to say confirmations, affirmations of me repeating to myself, I can, I can do this, you know, I can, I can change this. I can, I can, you know, I can, step it back. I can, you know, try to get it under control. And there are days when I don't have it under control. And then there are days when I do have it under control. But I've always, you know, I've, all, I've, I've struggled with it for a long, long time. And obsessive compulsive disorder and anxiety, it's, it, they're two things I've struggled with. And they, and they go hand in hand for me. Some people, they may not, but for me, they have. And I've struggled with it for, a long time. I've struggled with it for, for probably almost 20 years. And it's something that I've not ever talked about to really to anyone because it is for me, I, I just, I guess I'm embarrassed, um, maybe ashamed, you know, I mean, and, and having depression, anxiety, OCD, whatever, mental disorder, whatever challenge that you have is, it's not anything really, it's not anything to be ashamed of. It's, it's, you know, you have it, there's nothing, you know, it's, there's nothing you can do except try to do your best to, to get better or do your best to, you know, to do, you know, do your best. That's really all you can do. Just like a physical disease. And no, I'm not crazy, and neither is anyone else who suffers from depression, anxiety, OCD, PTSD, 
schizophrenia, whatever it is that they suffer from does not mean that they're crazy. It means that they have a disease, they have a disorder, and it, you know, in some cases they have to take medication for it. In other cases, maybe like me, you don't take medication, you, um, you know, you use behavior modification and, and meditation and prayer and whatever exercise, diet, whatever works to try to to control it and and usually it's if you take a more holistic alternative approach it's going to be a combination of all those things of behavior modification diet exercise meditation whatever it is that helps and what works for one person may not work for another what works for me is getting out driving taking pictures, photography, those things really, those things calm me down and get me into a better place almost immediately. But sometimes, and it, it, it's not a me, it's not always immediate for me when I feel overwhelmed and in that pressure cooker and in a state of anxiety that I seem to, you know, I want to jump out of my skin. I just want to, you know, I, I want to get up and go because it's the only thing that I know, and a lot of people don't understand this, and, and a lot of people, most people don't know it about me, and because I've never shared it, I mean, it was not something in my family that was encouraged to share, because, you know, they would, you know, my mother, my, you know, my father, they, my, my dad was a big health nut that would have just said, oh, drink this herb tea, drink that herb tea, and it'll take care of it, or take this vitamin or that, and my mom would have just been she was the buck up and snap out of it those were you know a lot of parents are that way and my mother was the buck up and snap out of it type you know and that's exactly what she would have said buck up you know snap out of it get over it you know and a lot you know because she was a very I, I want to say and I told her before she died and I and you know and I wasn't being disrespectful I at one point I mean and there was a lot more to it than that but but I'm not going to go into the conversation. I don't, you know, many, we had many conversations, but I told her, I said, you are, you're very, a very hard person. You're a very hard woman. And you're, 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 you're just, you know, you have, it's like you have no compassion and no, you know, no empathy, no, you know, nothing. And she really didn't. So, but she, she adopted that from, from my grandmother, her mother, my grandmother. She was the buck up, snap out of it type too, you know, who thought all you had to do was just tell yourself that whatever it is is going to go away and it'll go away, you know, and it doesn't work that way. It's like, you know, getting a physical disease like cancer and saying, okay, go away cancer, you know, and going buck up. I'll just buck up and tell it to go away and it'll go away. No, it doesn't work that way. And neither does depression, anxiety, you know, OCD or any other mental disorder. It does not just go away because you tell it to. It, it doesn't work that way. And th and that's something that I, I you know, I definitely with my mom and my dad, I, you know, they weren't people that you could discuss this with. I, it, I couldn't discuss it with anyone in my family, really. And to be honest, I really couldn't discuss it with anybody because nobody really understood. In fact... Only someone who has been through OCD, anxiety, depression, any of it, will really truly understand what it's like to live with some type of, of mental disorder. It, it, they're the only ones that can even remotely comprehend what that's like. Now they may not. Now someone who suffers depression may not understand OCD. An OCD person may not understand depression. I I now be the first to admit that I really I'm going to be honest. I really don't understand depression, but I it's there it exists a lot of people have it a lot of people take medication for it as a matter of fact my ex-boyfriend has to take medication for it and he probably will for the rest of his life but and there's a lot of other people who also take medication for it many years ago I dated a guy who was manic well what they call manic depression at that time bipolar he was on medication but there were many times when he thought he didn't need to take his medication And of course, he would go into a state of mania, you know, and and it was just not not good at all. And eventually, and he just he act he really was he really did did not behave 
you know, when he was off his medication, he did not behave like he was sane. People thought he was crazy, but eventually, unfortunately, eventually he committed suicide. And it, it was, that was difficult. I, we were broken up by that time, but it, it was very difficult. He also, I think, tried to self-medicate with alcohol. A lot of people do that. But anyway, back to, you know, o OCD or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever it is. In my case, it's mostly it's OCD and anxiety. I struggle with it. I have. I probably will for the rest of my life. I do my very best to try to be calm and, you know, and, and try to whatever storms hit, I do my best to try to ride through them without getting too upset, too anxious, too anxiety ridden, but, but I do. And sometimes I do. And sometimes I don't control it. Sometimes I can't control it. And I think for a lot of people that suffer with any kind of disorder, mental disorder, they probably do find out just like I did that there are times when no matter how hard they try, they end up succumbing to it or they can't get past it, you know, and that's just, you know, and, and it, it's difficult and it's, and it's a sad, and it, and when it, ha it hits, it's a sad place to be. But, you know, one of the things that has really helped me and it, it really truly opened my eyes and it opened up my life and probably saved my life is when I got out and I started traveling, I bought myself a brand new car. I started traveling. It was the first time really I'd ever really traveled. And I'd never really been at anywhere. I mean, from Florida. So, you know, I'd traveled, you know, back and forth from Florida to North Carolina, you know, and probably a few other places when I was a kid that my parents may have taken me to that I really don't remember. But the real travel for me when I was an adult it was, for me, it was a lifeline. I started traveling, and it was just a lifeline. You know, it was a way that I, I could deal with the anxiety and the stress. And when I felt like I was in a pressure cooker, I that's how I dealt with it. Unfortunately, it was not beneficial. It wasn't beneficial to my relationship with my ex-husband. However, he had his own set of issues, and I've talked about this before. He is an alcoholic. He 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 goes on, you know, there that he'll go for many 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 months where he does not drink, and then something something will happen, and he will hit a runner or what you know what we call a runner, where he will drink for days or weeks on end, and then he'll try to get off, and he's he's detoxing with the DTS, you know, shaking and you know, and then he has to drink teas for days to try, you know, and other things to try to detox, and then he'll stay sober for, you know, maybe another three months, month, six months, you know, whatever, ten months, year, and then boom, something will hit, and he'll, he'll you know, he'll, he'll fall back into the old trap, and he will start drinking, and he won't have, like, one day, two days, so most of the, sometimes he'll only drink, he'll get lucky and only drink maybe two, three days, you know, or a week, you know, and then he'll quit, but... But a lot of times he'll go on a runner. And then, and for, for me, when I was with my ex-husband, that was not, was not a good place to be. Nobody, really. I don't care if they are, have no disorders at all. They're physically, mentally, like, one. I don't care if they're 100%, 100% physically, emotionally, spiritually, you know, 150%. Dealing with alcoholism is difficult, and when you have, but when you have a disorder of your own, like I did, like I do with OCD, anxiety, um, it's it's near impossible to deal with. And I simply, I would, you know, and I would, and I would lose my temper because I did not like it. I would tell him I didn't like it. I didn't want him to do it. I, it was his behavior was he would be obnoxious. He would bounce off the walls for hours, not sleep. It was just terrible. And the only option, the only outlet I had was to get in my car and leave. And when we lived together, I did a lot of leaving. He would get drunk off his chain, as a lot of people call it. And I would leave. I would do the only thing I knew. And, and, and that's kind of what's... And that's the second thing. 
when when I when I started out, of course, I love to travel, you know, and I would travel. And then when I met my ex-husband, of course, you know, we moved in, we were in a house, you know, and but then it wasn't long before the alcoholism, you know, he was doing it and he did nothing to control it. He'd work, he'd get, you know, whatever work would upset him, he would drink. And, and anyway, this went on and on for days, weeks, months. And eventually, you know, I tolerated it, I think, for maybe six months. And then I went out on my first little tiny road trip, maybe for a day, you know, I was only gone overnight. And then I went out on another little road trip. I was only gone maybe overnight. And then the next time, maybe two days, you know. And then I waited a while, and it was a day, maybe two. And eventually, two or three days turned into a week. week turned into two weeks. Two weeks turned into three. Eventually, it turned into three months. Eventually, it turned into six months, where I'd be out on the road, and I wouldn't come home. Eventually, I was out on the road for well over a year. I called it quits. I told him, I said, I'm done. I cannot do this any longer. I cannot be, I, I cannot tolerate the alcoholism. I cannot tolerate you being drunk. I can't tolerate you bouncing off the walls. I can't tolerate it any, any longer. It is, at that point, I felt like it was destroying my health. The, the push-pull, I would, you know, I would try, I would stay out on the road for weeks, months at a time, you know, being in my car, going places. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I enjoyed all the places I went, but we would also talk on the phone all the time, and, or a lot, he'd call me, you know, we'd get in a fight, you know. And sometimes just, we, we'd end up in screaming matches on the phone. And, we, you know, when we were at home, we'd be in screaming matches. We'd be on the road. He'd call me. I'd be on the road. He'd call me. There'd be screaming matches. And this just this was not good. And it just, you know, I felt like, I think probably one of the last times we were together in the house, I was almost to the point. I was to the point where I, I was having problems breathing. And I have a heart condition. And I was having problems breathing. And I, I said, you know what? I, I do believe I was within a very, I was just one step away, I think, from a heart attack. And I, and I knew it. And after that, I said, I can't do this, this, you know, either. And I can't continue to, to, to be on the road and then come home and hope things are going to change. Cause I, by this, by this time, I, I knew they were going to change. I, I would just come home because I'd been on the road for as long as I could. And I simply needed a place to, to, to crash for a while and, you know, sleep in a bed and try to uh, re, re energize, if you will, and then go back out on the road again. So I finally said, that's it. I quit and I'm not going to do this. And I left. And I was on the road for well over a year. I told him I was done. That was it. Uh, came back. And then there's a whole other story with someone else. And, and, and I've talked a little bit about, and I have talked about that in bits and pieces. And I'm not going to talk about that here. I will talk about that later in another video. But that's a, that, that's another video for another day. But this video, anyway, and, and, and the drunkenness, his drunkenness and alcoholism, it absolutely did not help my OCD or my anxiety. It, it compounded it probably tenfold. So finally, anyway, I, anyway, after when I came back, you know, when I came back, I didn't come back to my ex-husband, but I did come back to our, you know, where, where, you know, where my seasonal house is. And I ended up staying with someone else who, you know, and there's a long story there, eventually wanted to be my boyfriend. And it's just a, that's just a mess. That was a big old hot mess that I, I'm not going to go into right now. But it, it, and eventually, of course, uh, you know, that came to an end and I left and I, you know, I went back to, to, uh, you know, I went, I went, essentially went back to, um, the Outer Banks where I was, uh, essentially living because I, I, the person that owns the boat that I live in knew about my situation and he's a friend, longtime friend and decided that he want, you know, he'd help me out. He needed someone to sit his boat anyway. So he gave me the opportunity to move in and I did. Okay, I just started another video. I think I did maybe two, three minutes of it, and it I lost it because um, my phone overheated. It has been doing that. Anyway, so I had to, it basically, I lost that video. 
I had to crank my, uh, start my car and run the AC and stick my phone like up against the AC vents, which I, I've done before to try to cool the phone off. That is like really annoying. But anyway, so that's basically it. I, I'm trying to cool my phone off. I'm having to run the AC. I don't think you can hear it in the background now. You might be a little bit, but I turned the fan all the way down. Anyway, what I was saying in the last video was this uh, longtime friend gave me the opportunity to come to the Outer Banks and live on his boat because he needed someone to, I guess, boat sit or house sit or whatever you want to call it. And I got that opportunity. And of course, I do pay rent, some rent, a small rent. But I don't, of course, I don't have to pay rent at my seasonal house. That's mine and my ex-husband's. But anyway, and I kind of went off a little bit. I was talking about OCD, depression, whatever. And that kind of segued into me talking about alcoholism and, uh, tox, you know, a toxic relationship and all that. And I've talked about the alcoholism and the toxic relationship before. I've definitely talked about that. And I don't really want, I don't, did not want this video to segue into, you know, a, a whole video on toxic, toxicity and alcoholism and all that. That, that wasn't this, this video. Anyway, as of right now, everything's fine. My ex-husband is, sometimes he gets irritated and we both get, we both do. And someone point out, pointed out to us one time that we are like fire and gasoline and we really are. I'm not sure if I'm the fire and he's the gasoline or he's the fire and I'm the gasoline. I don't know which, but we are definitely like fire and gasoline. It, someone also pointed out at one point that I didn't, he didn't push my buttons and I didn't you know, go up the thermostat scale and get hotter. I was just on red hot all the time, and I think he is too, probably to some degree. But for the most part, we do and can get along. It's just the main time that we don't get along is when he drinks, and that that is definitely definitely an issue. But other than that, the rest of the time, we more or less we get along, and and we try to. You know, I, I, I mean, I recognize, you know, if he's starting to get irritated or whatever, and I kind of just try to back off, and I think he maybe knows to do the same thing with me. And if, you know, like right now, I'm in my car, you know, because I want to do my videos, and, and you know, and I don't want to be bothered. Now, luckily for me, he, he came out, you know, just to see, you know, because I, I went in, into the living room, and he was laying on the futon, and no remote control. I want to stop the movie so I can watch it later. Unfortunately, there's no remote. I, I have no clue what he's done with the remote. And that made me, that makes me, and that irritates me. That, that is something that kind of causes me to, you know, some anxiety because I want to turn the TV off. I want to pause it. I can't because I don't know where the remote control is. Which is really, you know, that that's annoying. That, that's very annoying for me. So... And which kind of leads to ner leads to nervousness and anxiety for me. Well, anyway, so under normal circumstances, I'd probably get mad. He'd wake up and then he'd start shouting and screaming, you know. And we get, you know. So I finally just said, okay, I do not know where the remote control is. So rather than let it play, though, I just said, you know what, I want I want to stop the movie. So I just decided, okay, I'll just, you know pull, you know, I'll just pull the, you know, plug from the, you know, I wanted to stop the movie, and I know this is extreme, but I did not know where the remote control was, and I also knew if I woke him up, he'd, he'd, be, he'd get up screaming and mad because he was woken up, so I just unplugged the TV and said, okay, you know, problem solved, because I, you know, I, and hope that it doesn't, like, knock out the Wi-Fi or whatever, he said, he just told me it, it, it didn't, you know, and I told him, I said, I didn't know where the remote control was, so I just unplugged it from the wall, because I didn't know where it was, you know, and, and it's things like that that I find very irritating, I really do, I don't understand why, you know, it can't, it can't be a little simpler, but anyway, that does cause me some anxiety, I also know that I am probably at about 45 minutes of talking about anxiety, OCD, depression, and that kind of thing, and I don't want to continue to talk because I know I am somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 to 50 minutes, and I rarely do the 45, I rarely do a video over about 20 minutes now, so, or 30, 30, 20 to 30, I, you know, that I sometimes top out at about 30, if I go up closer to 35, 40, I'm like, okay, that's, you know, it's too 
too much. And a lot of videos that I did in the Shenandoah and the Blue Ridge Parkway, when they got up close to, when I got past 30 minutes, I started breaking them up so that they would be maybe only 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes, you know, because I know I did one or two that I looked at and was like, okay, these are going to be an hour long, you know. I, no way. I'm not doing an hour. So, anyway, but I know I went off on a tangent and I talked about a lot of other stuff, but but one of the things I want to say before I end this video is for me it is just it is about finding something that works and puts you in a I guess a happier place and for me that's photography I love photography I love taking pictures of nature old cars old houses empty houses abandoned buildings places I think is haunted um, just you know, visiting different places, downtown, downtowns, it doesn't matter, you know, and that I enjoy doing that, doing that, and recently I have discovered that I like doing video as well, believe it or not, I never thought in a million years that I would like doing video, if someone had told me a year ago, or five years ago, that I would do video, I would be behind the camera, I would have said, you are nuts, because I do not like being behind the camera, never have, but I, you know, it, it took me a long time to, that's something else, that, that, that's something else, and that segues into the next thing I want to talk about, which I guess would be self-esteem, because that is another, that ties in with the OCD, may, maybe, I'm not sure, I don't know if it ties in together or not, but for me it kind of does, so OCD, um, depression, uh, self-esteem, self-esteem is something else, and I, I've had some major hits to that, that of course is another video, and I'm not going to talk about self-esteem in this video, I will save that for another video, but uh, all I can say, all I can end with is try to find something that helps to calm you down and whatever. I don't know about depression, but I know with anxiety, definitely whatever you can do to calm down is a help, at least for me. Um, depression, I can't really offer a lot of advice there, but I do sympathize. I do empathize with your situation if you're suffering depression. I definitely do because I know what it's like to go through OCD, and I have went through depression and when I was very young. Anyway, um, that said, I'm going to end this video now and wish everyone a good week and God bless. Peace.